So the deer you guys saw me get last night and we cut it up on the hill. We, do, we got it a quarter and threw it in our backpacks and everything. It is now ready to process. And so this is our little setup here. So you can see the meat here. These are the back straps we took out, the tenderloins. This is a rear leg all the way down to the, uh, to the hip bone. And this is a front leg here. So what I'm gonna do now is there's a little bit of hair, a little bit of debris to do. And so I'm gonna do that off camera. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just kind of clean all that up and throw that as scrap. I also want to talk through my setup here. So I've got a grinder. It's called the Big Bite. This one is, uh, it's not quite commercial, but it's faster than some of the small ones, LEM brand. Um, everything's a little dirty because we've already done a few deer and some elk this season. So um, we just soaked it in uh, some ice water and uh, kept it all nice and uh, nice and cold so we can just keep going as we keep hunting. So we got the grinder, got some metal pots here. And then we've got a food saver, vacuum sealer, and vacuum sealer bags. All of our fillet knives, some sharpeners, and then the other thing that works well is just disposable. These are like a dollar a piece, disposable tablecloths. Throw them over your folding tables and you got an instant little butcher shop here. All right, I cleaned up these quarters here, these legs. So I'm gonna show you the way I like to debone deer. I don't use saws or anything like that. I just get all the meat off of it. The front shoulder, especially on a deer, there's really not enough meat to do anything other than hamburger. And so I like to use a fillet knife and you can see this little white line, that's a ridge of a bone for the shoulder blade. And I like to come just on the inside of it, cut all the way down to the flat surface and then turn your knife and just kind of follow that flat surface away. And you can see that's the bone right there. Getting all the meat off. And I'm just gonna start filling up one of these little pans here with hamburger meat. So the grinder I use, they need to be in little chunks, probably about that big to go down through the, uh, the mouth of the grinder. So on the other side, it's the same thing. Oh, another point that I like to do is you're, if you find little stray pieces of hair everywhere, um, you can touch it with your gloves and then touch it to a paper towel and that usually makes it stick to the paper towel. chunk that up off camera, it's a little smaller bites, so the video doesn't take so long to watch. And there's a little bit of bloodshot there, that's the stuff you want to try to really avoid. All right, so I flip this leg over. These tendons that are right here, they're really a little too tough to even eat in hamburger, so I usually come up a few inches and cut down to the bone and then pick it up and just cut away from you. You're just peeling it off the bone. Sorry, we had to take a break. The wind came up as I left off my awning, my camper, so I put the awning up. Just 
following that bone the whole time. Here on the back, there's a protrusion of the bone right there, and there's a lot of meat in there, so you usually come in like this and kind of cut down. Do this right you can pretty much almost get all this meat to come off in one chunk and then you just cut it up in little pieces small enough to go on the grinder so now I'm to this top joint All right, on the back side of the shoulder blade, <clears throat> there's a fair amount of meat in here, so I like to come in right on this edge, the fillet knife, and just follow that bone line. And the interesting, the top couple inches is cartilage, so you can kind of cut through that, so you kind of want to not push so hard against it on the top. the grinder okay and then it's just a matter of picking it up and kind of just cutting off the remaining little scraps of meat and try to get as much as you possibly can so it's been our experience over the last few years that if you do this method and you cut up the meat the next day or the next day after that as long as you've kept it nice and cold nice and clean it sure does taste good. I, um, I'm not a big proponent of hanging and aging it. I've tried that in the past and it seems like it tastes more gamey. So I think this is, at least this is our preferred method. I'll pick that clean a little bit more off camera. That's kind of boring to watch. And I will also chunk this up into grindable parts off camera. And then we'll come back to the back leg. All right. <clears throat> Starting up now on this uh, rear leg. You can see the uh, ball joint that I was showing you in the video last night. And so there's a bone that's from here to here. And what I like to do is just try to get all these muscle groups off. Pretty much just kind of peel out that bone. I'm cutting down to the surface of the bone and just kind of going along that bone. And right above this joint, I cut in and down here, cut in all the way to the bone, all the way around. Now if I fold that back, you can see that bone laying in there. And I just cut along the bone. Now this is that all those muscle groups and so I'll show you in a bit how to cut that up into roasts and steaks so I'm gonna put that off to the side for a little bit come back and the rest of this is hamburger meat so this is a convenient handle come in here 
cut off down to where the tendon ends. Come in just a few inches where these tendons end. And same kind of thing as I did on the front leg. You just peel that meat off away from you while you're holding it up. There's a little contour in the bone right here, so it works good to come in like this. What's nice about this method is you don't have to dirty up a saw, you don't have to take it to a butcher, all you need is a knife and a cutting board. And I just use fillet knives to buy for filleting fish and things. All right, that's about all the meat that's left on that. So I'll cut this into grindable chunks real fast. Here's all those muscle groups that I just took off the bone. What I like to do is just kind of pull them back and you can just see they start to just kind of separate as you peel this back. So I cut out the muscle groups first. That's just hamburger right there. And sometimes it gets kind of confusing and if you can't tell if you want to just make hamburger out of it or if you want to try to make a roast or some steaks out of it what you can do when you get to this kind of oddball chunk up here this one is if you come to the side that's really not going to make anything good other than hamburger so you cut down into it when you cut down into it and look at it then you can kind of see the consistency of this meat so it looks like right there if i cut here i'd still get a good chunk of roast or steaks out of that spot and this piece is not really worth anything for roast or steaks so i'll just cut it real quick for hamburger all right one more muscle group to separate here So the next thing I'll do is go and I'm going to kind of clean off all of these because your wife is going to like the meat to look like it came from the grocery store. So kind of trim off the excess fat. If you happen to have any blood or anything or anything dirty on there, just kind of clean this up and just think about what the steaks look like at the store. That one, I'm just gonna call that a roast. I'm gonna peel the uh, fat off of this. I'll make some steaks out of this one. So that'll slice up into some nice little steaks. And so that's just a pretty simple process, and I like to go about an inch. Slice. And figure out how many 
people you're feeding with this meal when you pull it out of the freezer and that's the number of steaks or chunks of meat you want to use. And then I start just making little piles of these steaks. Here on the back, a little bit bloody, I'm going to clean that up. Grind the... There's a little hair, a little bit of dirt there. So I'm going to toss that. Here's where a good fillet knife works out well. Because it's sharp enough, you can just kind of kind of skin this meat. And it's mostly aesthetic, really. I mean, clean it up real nice like that. And this top chunk can just be turned into hamburger. And then square it up. And then if you're gonna cut steaks, you kinda of wanna look and see how the grain is. And you wanna cut to where your grain of meat is like that. So you're basically perpendicular to how that meat grain is going. Probably get one more little one out of this. Make some nice venison steak right there. Put that in my steak pile. This one, it's really not good enough for anything but hamburger. I'm just gonna cube that up. We did an elk the other day and the muscle groups are just huge on that. So you get a ton of options for steaks and roasts and cubed meat out of an elk. Clean this off a little bit. I like my meat really, really lean. And also, the last couple years, I have not been adding any like pork or beef or anything to either deer, elk, or antelope. And using this method that I've been showing you in these videos, everything has tasted outstanding. And then it's super lean. So I'm squaring it up now. That will make some really good steaks. The grain's this way. I'm gonna cut here. So there's another pile of steaks. And for some reason, the uh, little wasps like to come out here when you're doing this and they never sting you. They just like the smell of that meat. So that one's gonna be a roast. I'll vacuum seal that all by itself. So that's the front and the hind quarter done. That's ready to grind. This is ready to wrap and vacuum seal. Okay, I've got all four legs done, cut up. And that's my amount of meat to grind. This is the steaks and roast pile. So I'm down to the back straps. I've already cleaned off this one. These are the tenderloins. Those were already nice and clean. And so now I'm gonna just kind of show you how to clean this one up. And so this top this top layer is like a, it's like a sheath of tendon or something. It's actually very tough. And so if you get your fillet knife nice and sharp, the way I like to do it is to come on like this and just try to try to do as much as possible to where you don't cut up into there. And then you're just gonna try to clean this up without cutting into your steaks. You can use these trimmings for hamburger if you want. On the elk, that tendon was really thick, so it just kind of goes to waste because probably plug up the grinder. And I square off the end.
There's a little bit of bloodshot on this one. I'm going to end up just kind of tossing that little section. Get it nice and clean like that. And then this is all really good steak. It's nice and tender, tastes great. I like to do again about an inch. You slice that all the way up. Towards the end, if it gets a little too small, just make that hamburger. And then I'll do a tenderloin on the video. Tenderloin is tiny, so you might get one meal out of both of them. Just make sure it's nice and clean. It's not worth trying to grill, but then cut these fairly thick. Nice little tenderloin steaks. All right, so that is one doe mule deer decent size probably medium size completely processed the three pans are ready to grind and i've got my steaks these are round steaks from the uh, back legs this is the uh, back strap that's my little chunks of tenderloin a couple roasts in there so real quick i'm going to show you how this grinder works it does it pretty fast So that's about all you need to see. I mean, it's just more of the same, kind of boring to watch. So what I'd like to do, I'd like to grind it twice though. So I'll run all that through each pan and then I'll dump a pan and I'll run it through again. All right, so this is a food saver vacuum sealer. I kind of like this one because it seals the bottom edge of the roll. And uh, when you unlock it, you pull this out. And you lock it again, it starts sealing the next one there. It's got a cool little razor blade thing. You can cut that next bag out. Open it up and then figure out how many steaks you want in your package. That's when you kind of flip it up stick it in there ways you can kind of see it's got a little viewing window see when it's in there where that traps all the moisture if there is moisture and you just push here Sucks all the uh, air out, and now it's going to seal up there, and then it leaves a place where you can label. And it's ready for the freezer. So that's pretty much the process. I'm going to go ahead and vacuum seal all that. I'll finish grinding those last couple batches, and I'll vacuum seal that. All right, just finished up. So one person using that technique, a little practice, did this whole deer in about two and a half hours, all vacuum sealed. The little campground we're staying at, the host was nice enough to let us bring up a freezer. And we've got that thing full from this year's season. So the last thing I'll talk about is what we like to do is take the evidence of sex that you show, I showed you in the other video. Put that with your tag, make sure you got it signed and everything. I mean, this all happened at the kill. 
but uh, we like to keep that with the meat just to stay uh, legal. All right, hope you guys learned a lot. Well, this has been a pretty successful hunting season. We have an elk and three deer in here, all done at that same technique that I just showed you.